tinfoil hat. Oh, what the fuck are you guys even talking about? Global controls will have to be imposed. And a world governing body will be created to enforce them. Welcome to Tinfoil Hat. We, we, we go deep, homeboy. Eric, open your mind. Drink from the fountain of knowledge. There's lizard people everywhere. That's some interdimensional shit. Wake up, Aaron. This is only the beginning. There's you just blew my mind. Are you ready to get your mind blown? Good morning, Swarm, and welcome to Tim Fall Hat. You know I am. You know I'm here to do. I'm here to rock. Join me as always, Xavier Guerrero, on the ones and twos, Jay Nice, Johnny Wooder. Some guy asked me the other day who it was that says rock. He didn't know it was XG. Isn't that funny? I, th- I thought it was oh, pretty clear. Oh, snaps. Yeah. Look at So, XG. yeah, that's XG uh, yes. doing wow. the rock thing. Why, rock. Why? why, why? What's the problem? No, he was just curious. He didn't know. I was Which like, one of you guys says it? <laughs> so, Thank you for asking, tin sir. Tinfoil trivia. Tinfoil trivia, guys. I uh, hope you guys are doing well. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, a lot of great stuff going on. We got a really great podcast today. We get into MK Ultra, uh, psychic abilities, uh, astral projection with Ryder Lee of uh, Raised by Giants. Very exciting. Great podcast. Great episode. Finishes out a Fire week on Tim Fall Hat. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. So this is a great episode. Uh, I am going to be tomorrow night in Yuma at the Crest Ultra Loud. Tickets are moving quick. Grab them now. Come get weird. Myself, uh, some of my buddies are out there hanging out there. Banging, bro. We just out here banging, dog. Uh, do you, got, you guys got anything you want to push real quick? Uh, we don't smoke the same. Go check it out. We started a Patreon. There's a really dope tier. It's a hundred dollar tier. It's gonna be worth it. If, okay. If, if, yeah, okay. If you're not from the states. Get your go get it. name tattooed on Xavier's <laughs> taint. Hey everybody, real quick, I forgot to tell you. Uh, April 11th is going to be the next comedy cast. Double shows Tuesday night. Holla at your boy. Go get and it. then we're gonna have uh, Toronto uh, on April 13th through the 15th. I'm in uh, Toronto at the Royal Comedy Center. Uh, it is a tiny theater. Grab your tickets, cause Daddy's bringing hammers. Tiny, tiny. It's only sixty seater. Oh, that's personal. So you get do- that ticket. You yeah, don't get. You, yeah, you get. Say, yeah. I feel. I feel like dropping hammers. J- Justin Trudeau, Daddy's coming. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> All right, guys. Also, if you go to Sam Tripoli live, we're going to go through this real quick. You can find all the YouTube. Anything Sam Tripoli, anything Naughty Show. I mean, excuse me, anything Tim Foha. Find it on uh, samtripoli.com. All my premium content. Anybody's premium content. Tim Foha, Zero, Conspiracy Social Club, Cash Daddies, Patreon, all of that. Click it and fucking win, okay? T-shirts available at uh, timfoha.com. All you got to do is click to buy a banner, and we got new shirts for you. Old shirts are back. Is that loyal to the foil, a new one or an old one? That's a new one. That's a new one. That's a different one. I don't know when that came up, but bam, there you go. I don't remember who sent me that, but there you go. Loyal to the foil. That's rad, man. I I dig that. Okay, we'll get you one. And then uh, conspiracy theorists are wrong. Just your algorithm is lying to you, and your algorithm is lying to you is available there. Guys, get on our, with our... Dude, I got new affiliates coming. Check out some of our older affiliates. Buy gold and silver from Wise Wolf. I do it every month. I'm part of his program. Just click Sam Tripoli. Uh, hydrogen brown gas. Moving into my new place. About to bang out some hydrogen gas. About to bang it out. I've had people this right. up. They really like it. And then we're very excited. Some of you guys have checked out Harley. Harley. Har- go up. Go up. Yeah. Harley Ray's. Uh, their, sh- their crystal shop. Go back to the front page, please. Go back to samtriple.com. Harley Ray's right there. Just use the promo code SWARM15. Crystals, uh, whatever you need is there, dog. Look at the pretty crystals. Look at Candles, that. you name Candles, it. Quartz, quartz, you got you it. You name it, it's there. Everything you need to fight the battle, of the forces of evil, they're good. And listen, everybody there at Harley Ray is fucking cool. There's not a 
not a mean person there. They're all good people, and we're proud to work with them. We're just trying to figure out the right podcast to bring them on to talk about. Guys, you want you hate social media? Go to nukesocial.com. Nuked.social. Okay? Check it out. That's my social media, and you can get on all the telegrams from there. I'm very proud of it. Nuked.social. Check it out. Anything else, guys? Broken Simulation. Check it out. Check out Broken Sim. Check out Conspiracy Social Club. Check out uh, Free Zeros. Uh, Cash Daddies. You name it. It's all there. Go to samtriple.com. Click the banners. Take you right to it. Hope you guys enjoy this episode. We're getting into MK Ultra, psychic abilities, and all that stuff with Ryder Lee. Enjoy. We go deep, homeboy. <laughs> Eric, open your mind. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. I love this topic. I'm very excited to get into it. I'm very excited to have this gentleman on. Uh, I believe that you also did my uh, Rockfin show at one point, right? I, I believe you were on my other show, right? Yeah, yeah so, around six months ago, yeah. Oh, yeah, so it's been a while, but I'm very happy to have you on. He has a podcast called Raised by Giants. Please welcome podcaster, researcher, Ryder Lee. How are you, Ryder? Doing great, Sam. Thanks so much for having me on. Hello, Johnny. Hello, XG. We were just talking hey, earlier that we, well, I seen you guys at that uh, child sex trafficking protest in 2020, which was really wild. Uh, yeah, I'm happy to be here, ready to rock and roll on these topics. We'll get into a lot of that. You know, uh, we're discussing the, uh, uh, you said well, it was three years ago almost the the uh, anti uh, child now? sex trafficking protest and all the chaos that all these like talking heads were like don't go to that it's been it's been hijacked and it's like it's so like that's when I was like wow this is really crazy you know and me you know Scotty the, the kid he put it together full full respect to him I think some people thought I did it and I didn't did we lose him. No, he's still there. Okay. I don't, I don't Some know. people thought we uh, that I, I had organized it. He had organized it, and it, it was a huge success. But both of us were kind of afterwards like, let's chill a little bit, and we'll uh, come back to it later because there was so much. People were like screaming at us that we weren't going to their ta- their their uh, protest, and we were only doing our protest, and like it started getting really nasty, and I was like, okay, but Sky the Kid is still crushing it. Uh, look at him, he's uh, dude, he's got a ton of uh, he's got the check mark, yeah, dog. I mean, he had it earlier just before, <laughs> but it's like good for you, bro. That guy's crushing it, but so you were there for that. We were talking about Johnny brought up about how big that that protest was and got zero national press. Yeah, I think the only coverage that I've seen that it got, it was on like a, it might have been a local news channel or maybe CNN or one of them got on it, but they didn't really show anything about how big the numbers, like they focused on like another protest that was going on that was all like QAnon related uh, nonsense that was happening. And they kind of lumped Scotty the Kid's protest in with QAnon people, you know, and then, you know, people were like, oh, well, you know, so that's the way that they did it. And the whole QAnon on thing was just a you know a big huge co-opted thing that you know turned into something that it wasn't even really meant to be in the very beginning and it, and it just uh muddied the waters between you know reality and what actually might be going on and like a stand down operation right that's what i look at the the q and on stuff tell as you, was dude, like a- johnny and i go at it all the time i have this thing that i think part of q and on was chat gpt or a program <laughs> like that where they use data that's possible i think and sure. they just were testing it out because you see how it writes it was very much like an ai and there are a lot of things that were in fact like i mean like i, I know every we get into this all the time so i, I just check your bingo cards but there are some <laughs> things that were talked about very much in the q post and the q all that have come to for come to light that haven't shocked that part of the conspiracy community, right? Hunter Biden, Ukraine, uh, Ru- uh, uh, Uranium One, Russia Gate, all that. I'm not going to go, we've talked about it in nauseum, but so like th- there is that aspect to it, but it's so funny because I just think about going back to that rally and what we were rallying about 
we didn't even know what was coming, which was like, and correct me if I'm wrong, Ryder, but like these drag shows weren't even a th- thing at yeah. that point. Do you think, in a weird way, if the QAnon people weren't there, it would have got more, more notice? No, because it wouldn't get any notice because there'd be nobody there. <laughs> no, I think there was a lot of people that were like just there for kids. And yep. they were not, uh, had nothing to do with QAnon. And then to me, when they threw the QAnon, that's when the CNN and all of them can make it look like crazy. Not that I don't believe it, but that's when you throw in like, look, crazy people, look, 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 it's so crazy. Yeah. Instead yeah. of just like, dude, yeah. it's a kid. Yeah. It's, it's, it's well, that's, thing. that's one of the things I think QAnon existed for, to, to make movements like that easily dismissed. Save but, the children. How to save but, the children protest not get viral when it's that big? It's Be very like, simple. It's very simple. Because it gets, it gets associated with conservatives. And these people who hate their dads automatically rally against it. I mean, we talk about this all the time on the show. Hollywood is full of people who are talking about microaggressions of male toxicity and sexual harassment. All of them are in therapy, most of it for childhood trauma, a lot of it sexual childhood trauma. And they'll look you right in the face and tell you drag shows for children are fucking artistic. I mean, you could be more fucking hypocritical. John Stewart, did you see him in that interview the other day on this? I, I just don't get why, how you can say that that's something that's because he his point was well, there's gun violence, so we should focus on that. We, I, you know, we can I, do more than one thing at a time. No, John Stewart no, and John, you're not talking about what you want to do is take away the guns. Well, he made no, that stat up, by the way. He yeah. said that the number one cause of death for children was gun violence, and that study is just wrong. Dude, Unless you count a child as someone who's from one. One to 19 years old. That's exactly what they're doing. Yeah, well, that's what I'm and saying. Then they take that, away. But if you go actually children, like 10 and under, it's it's all the things he said it wasn't. It's cancer, it's yeah, car accidents. Yeah, 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 He's yeah. Like, he lied. He yeah, lied. he lied because he has to dance that dance to be in that in that stress for your thoughts, Ryder. I feel like we're doing all the yeah, talking. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, buddy. All right. No, it's all right. I mean, the way that I look at the QAnon thing was like a huge stand down operation because regardless of what people think the United States, America is like the, the last standing superpower. So if we are out there rioting and doing all this stuff because of, uh, you know, COVID and all that nonsense, then, you know, other people follow suit. So they had to do something, put something out to make people not get uh, unruly and create chaos because when the chaos isn't a planned chaos then they don't want it and they shut it down quick it's different than like in australia different like in the uk and different in you know like uh, canada right if the united states would have been outraged about what was happening in 2020 then that would have created a ripple effect and none of this stuff would have been able to move forward so they put out something to make people just sit back and uh you know sit back and enjoy the show get your popcorn out things are about to go down and and not do anything about the circumstances that we're given so therefore other people don't follow suit and i mean if you look at you know australia and the uk there was like riots and protests about this stuff uh every single day because their measures were way more extreme, you know, and it wasn't like that here. So if they can put something out and make people not get all uh, bent out of shape about it, because we live in an echo chamber in the United States, like we don't get any information about really any other countries unless it's bad things, right? Yeah, we don't know how other sure. countries operate right here in the United States. We don't know what they're doing over there unless it's something horrible, like a a disaster or someone being assassinated, someone being killed. So that creates an echo chamber here in the United States. So if you haven't been outside of the United States, you have no idea what the social implications are of those other countries, what they're doing, what their customs are like. So we're looking at it from like rose collar glasses here in the U S well, yeah. yeah. And there's also a lot of reasons for that is because our, our, our government, our military, our financial uh, institutions basically are used to fund the deep state and the World Economic Forums and all that stuff with our printing of money. So they have to keep us sedated or else all chaos will break loose and they won't be able to run amok uh, among the whole rest of the world. The You know, like Australia and Canada, they're one giant country like where the United States has has all these states that have different rights 
you know, through Canada, we've had so many people from Canada on here that had told us, like, I couldn't go anywhere in Canada and get away from what Trudeau was doing. Same thing in Australia. Now, we had people, uh, fans of the show, going, all that shit's happening over there and not happening over here, which is very interesting to me, which is like, is this nonlinear warfare? Is a lot of the stuff that you're seeing, the selecting, the p-hacking of information, selective to make it so so both sides fight with each other constantly, you know, and and what's it's all about divide and conquer for sure, for sure. And the reason Americans don't, in my humble opinion, don't ever go nuts is because our standard of living is so high that we have everything and that it really doesn't affect us until it's and it's gonna have to get really bad, which I don't want it to, but that's what it's gonna take to get people to wake the fuck up and take to the streets and push back against what's going on. How bad it needs to get, I don't know. What's it going to take? That's the problem, Sam. The problem is, is by the time it gets really bad like that, it's going to be too late and the, the, the ball's already rolling down the hill and we're about to crash. Yep. You know, people don't want to do anything about their lives until it's too late, right? They don't want to start eating healthy until they got health problems. They don't want to start to lose weight until they're, they're uh, obese. You know, they don't want to make amends to their family members until their family members are dying. You know, it's this built in kind of system that we have as humanity. And it goes, uh, see, a lot of people, they talk about, you know, MK Ultra and aliens and ETs and people visiting Earth and like all this stuff and the Stargate project and uh, Project Looking Glass where they can see into the future, see into the past. They have all this great technology, but, but people don't really actually get in there and study and like look at the real documents from any of these programs. And that's really the direction that I've really been going as a real research based direction and bringing people on my show that are really legit and have uh, really solid information. And it's interesting when you actually go through and because people throw out MK Ultra like all the time. They're like, oh yeah, it's it's MK Ultra, blah 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 blah. They're they're being MK Ultra, you know, and they've never went back and actually studied the 149 sub projects that's been declassified by the CIA of MK Ultra. And if they did, they would realize like a bunch of different things. They would see that drugging us is a huge thing that's been taken from the MK ultra programs, right? It's not just focused on LSD, right? They want you to believe that it was just LSD and they were using psychedelics as experimentation to brainwash and mind control people to do their bedding. But a lot of other drugs came out of those programs. Antidepressants came out of those programs. Antipsychotics came out of those programs. Amphetamine came out of those programs, which amphetamine being Adderall and Ritalin, Right. And they would do these things that was called depatterning, right? Where depatterning was to remove normal thinking patterns from the subject. So they would remove common sense, critical thinking, normal thought processes through some kind of trauma. And when people think of trauma, they think of like something really big, like them being beaten, them being, uh, you know, forced to, you know, uh, kill people or something very traumatic. Well, trauma can be very subtle, right? You, you can be traumatized in your everyday normal life from normal circumstances. Uh, you don't even have to be through a uh, an actual MK Ultra government sponsored program to fracture the mind. You can have trauma through ordinary things of just being a kid and something really traumatic happening to you and then your mind disassociates from that trauma your mind doesn't want to actually realize what's going on so then it creates a fictional reality and i agree with that that, that fictional reality if you get into disney right disney every one of their kids movies has one of the parents dying yeah that's trauma (laughs) that why is that in a kid show that is trauma People have no clue what trauma does to children. And that's why the pushing of like everything on kids right now from the woke left makes no sense whatsoever. I mean, I saw that thing you posted about the non-binary little elephant thing that you posted about. Yeah. And I was like, you. By the way, that came out and Netflix instantly deleted that show. Oh, did they? Oh, yeah, it's gone. <laughs> because everyone started pa- passing that. I'm telling you, bro. It's like. You have to watch what they're watching. 
You have to check it out. It's crazy. So let's get into this. There were 148 declassified subprojects. Tell us a little bit about some of them. Well, like I was mentioning, a lot of them involved the drugging of the the subjects. There were uh, other projects were to open up a uh, an entire wing of a hospital to um, study more of MK Ultra, and then they would sublease a lot of the projects to um, private companies so that they wouldn't have to actually document what they were doing directly from the CIA. And the, the 149 of them that's been declassified, that's not even the bulk of them that's just the ones that they They want like want us to see right it's it's not that there weren't more of them there's more rumors and speculation that there was a sub layer of mk ultra that the cia was doing that was on children that they were using uh, children in these programs but the ones that i really found interesting these sub projects there was at least four to five mk ultra sub projects that were specifically designed to study psychic abilities, ESP, telekinesis, and uh, telepathy. Okay, hold right? on. And before, before we get into that, because I want to I stay on something you said earlier, because, it, you know, we've had people come on the show and talk about Charles Manson, uh, what happened in, in Haight-Ashbury and so there was, a, you know, because you say, you brought up a great point. Everyone thinks it's just about LSD. It was also about crystal meth, speed, and the combination. <laughs> so now, now, like, when, when something's everywhere, all of a sudden, you got to go, why? So now, we got everyone's on Adderall. Now, yeah. everybody's doing what? Microdosing. That's both of those things. Right there in the same people. You're doing Adderall and you're microdosing. That's exact. Johnny, questions? Oh no! When I was just want to, you know, you can microdose. I, you mean microdosing mushrooms, right? Is yeah. That what you're okay. Yeah. Yeah. Microdosing mushrooms. So I mean, it's psychedelics. It's am- amphetamines and mu- and psychedelics, just like what they were working on in Hate Ashbury. It wasn't just LSD, like Ryder says. It was a bunch of stuff, but one of it was. Methamphetamine. I mean, the he- the Hell's Angels were one of the- were there at one of the concerts. There yeah, were, there were security. There was security at a, the show. They, 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 that wasn't even. Dude, they, they, they were just selling the the, the government shit. That's what they do. And they, they do all this stuff. They work with the government. The government gets them the stuff. It's really crazy how you see shows like on um, um, uh, what was that? Ozarks. You see, towards the end of last season, the FBI is straight up telling the Mexicans, like, "Hey, dude." We get our percentage. You can get in. They're telling you what they do right there. It's organized crime. Yeah, it's it's just it's federal. It's organized federal crime. Is what it is. That's so I do. have a question for you, Ryder. Do yes, you, sir. I have this thought that a lot of the FBI stuff that's going on with destroying the FBI brand is being done through the CIA, and I and that we've seen a lot of. Um, What's it called? Sheep dip? Is that the term right there? Where it's like there, you're, you're, and I could be yeah, using I think it's it. sheep dipping. I think sheep dipping, where you're, I think it's that you're, you're basically part sheep dipped, yeah, right? Is part. It has something to do with you're in both the CIA and the FBI, and that there's been a big, basically, because the CIA technically is not allowed to operate in, in America. The FBI is. <laughs> So why wouldn't the CIA slowly take over the FBI so they can control both? Well, that's how they do it. They actually take their funding and funnel it through certain individuals that are working for a three-letter organization and funding other research projects. And uh, we, we see that with the, uh, the the psychic research at SRI. Sidney Gottlieb, which was the head of all of the MK Ultra programs, was funneling money from the CIA to fund SRI to study psychics and uh, ESP abilities and stuff like that. Well, the, the, the whole thing just expanded out because if you look at the statistics on the U.S. population, how many of them are on some sort of pharmaceutical medication, you'll see that 
there's a study between 2014 to 2016 and it says that almost half of the United States population is on some sort of pharmaceutical medication. Then if you look at the adult uh, statistic, that, that 67 to uh, 68% of adults on the, in the United States are on some sort of pharmaceutical medication. So what I personally believe that they've done, I believe that they have created certain disorders in order to put people on certain kinds of medications that they were experimenting on within the MK Ultra programs. I mean, if you look at ADHD, ADHD yeah. wasn't even really a thing until like the late 90s, right? And then what do they put all the kids on that's been diagnosed with ADHD? They put them on Adderall or Ritalin, which is an amphetamine, which speeds up your brain, which is the exact same thing that they were experimenting on within the MK Ultra programs. And also Sidney Gottlieb had a brother that was a plant biologist, right? Which there's no connections but that he was actually putting together the compounds to use on the experimentation within the MK Ultra programs. But it's just interesting uh, to me, and I don't think is a coincidence that Sidney Gottlieb had a brother that was a plant biologist that could create a lot of these compounds that they were using with the experimentation on subjects during the uh, early 50s until 75. But the to your question, though, a lot of these organizations, they take the fall for something, right? The CIA took the fall for the MK Ultra programs. But what people don't know is they, every intelligence organization, almost every intelligence organization, a lot of the military branches also had their hands in the pot of MK Ultra, just like they all had their hands in the pot with the, the psychic phenomenon, with the ESP phenomenon as well. They were all funding it. They were all doing their own experiments and the CIA took the fall for it, but the air force has been running MK ultra programs congruently with the CIA and is still running MK ultra programs, but they've never been made to come clean about the experimentation that they've been doing. So it all fell on the CIA. So all, all the, the organizations, they normally take the fall for something while the rest of the organizations continue to operate and continue to do the research and continue to, to run the programs. Yep. I totally 100% agree that this is just, you know, create a problem, be the solution. That has always been it. I mean, we see it over and over again. All the pharmaceutical companies are into dark, dark arts, dark, dark arts. Uh, so what, I mean, like, so I see some things you list, uh, some of the sub projects are UFO history, alien abduction, military crafts. What do you, what is that? How's that MK ultra? Well, I just mentioned that the air force was running MK ultra programs, right? So what would be the purpose for the air force to do that? Could they MK ultra people, to make them believe that they were abducted by an alien, make them believe that they seen a UFO, seen a, a craft in the sky. Right? That's where my thought process goes on all this stuff because really and, and truly, and people are really going to disagree with me here and they're going to buck me and they'll probably give you a lot of hateful comments, but there is zero Bring proof, it. zero evidence that aliens exist. There's zero proof, zero evidence that extraterrestrials exist. Okay, so then you said the Air Force is still running the MK, MK Ultra projects, right? Do you think any of those have to do with uh, the TikTok little UFOs? How they're that's how they're pro gonna throw in uh, Project Blue Beam? Well, whenever you look back at the history of UFOs, um, you go back to the mid 1800s. And with this group called the Sonoro Aero Club, which was in Northern California, uh, James Delshaw and uh, Peter Minnis. There's schematics of these craft that they were working on. They would use a green spinning mercury fuel additive to let their craft lift up off of the ground. And then you have, uh, if you look through the news reports of back in those times, you'll see that people started seeing stuff in the sky. 
right? They would see weird crafts in the sky. And you fast forward a little bit. Walter Bosley has written uh, several books about the Sonora Aero Club, and I've interviewed him several times. He's a really big friend of the show. Uh, that's not something that I've researched. That's just something that, uh, you know, uh, you know, looking, reading through his books and having him on my show, he's told me about. And you fast forward a little bit to World War II, and uh, uh, the Germans during World War II was working on the almost the exact same kind of technology with the the Glocka Bell technology. I'm sure you guys are familiar uh, with the, the bell, the, the Nazi German bell. Well, all that the bell would do was lift up off of the ground and it had a lot of, it needed a lot of electricity running to it. And they were using a red spinning mercury fuel additive. And then after the war ends is whenever we get all of these events happening. And we have Roswell, 1947. Yeah, yeah. We have the Washington Flap event, 1952. We have the Kecksburg event, 1967. I mean, uh, 65. All right. So, and then we have the first abduction experience that went viral. Uh, well, it wouldn't be viral back then because there was no internet, but it got really popular within the United States, which was Betty and Barney Hill. Betty Barney Hill was in 1961. All right. So, it's. Just, I don't think that it's a coincidence that. We have been working and trying to develop this kind of technology for a really long time. There's reports of people seeing strange things in the sky around the time that we're doing this. And you have the, the German technology, and then you fast forward a little bit, and then you have a UFO crash in 1947. It seems almost like it's all of our technology. And then when you uh, look at the Betty and Barney Hill case, the very first statements from Barney which is very difficult to find. You have to do a lot of research because they're trying to cover it up. But the first statements from Barney was that it was the military that abducted them, that it was military officers in military uniforms that abducted them. And then it wasn't until after the regression that uh, Betty went through, she started saying that it was aliens. That's so, unbelievable. That aliens. I've never heard that. And that's fascinating yeah. to hear. Really? Uh, yeah. I, that's Wow. Hey guys, real quick, I want to tell you about our friends at Hello Tushy. That's right. Bidet, bidet, hooray. <laughs> Hip hop bidet. Hip hop bidet. Hey, oh. ho, hey, for your hole. Hip hop bidet. Hey, for your hole. Bam, let me tell you about p uh, bidets. Let me tell you about Hello Tushy. That's right. We're talking bidets here, man. We're talking about cleaning your b-hole the way God wanted you to, okay? Do you guys know on average um, Americans use 57 sheets of TP every single day? Wow. That's 36 billion rolls of toilet paper every year. That alone, that alone has resulted in a loss of 15 million trees, 437 billion gallons of water, and 250,000 tons of bleach. Why, God, why? <laughs> why are we doing this to the trees so we can clean our bee holes? Why? Tushy uses less than one pint of water when it comes to washing your bee hole. You need only to use a few sheets of Tushy paper to pat dry. Love that. TP is one of the most expensive consumer goods out there. You're literally flushing money down the toilet. Can I wash my TP, man? Can I wash it with, t with Tushy? Hello, Tushy. You don't need it. Here, that's it. Hello, Tushy. Bidets clean your bum twice as better than wiping and prevents poo particles from spreading to your hands and everything else you touch. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Dude, and they got a warm edition. Ooh. You know, the best thing I ever heard, if you had poo on your hands, you wouldn't use toilet paper to get it off, would you? Yeah, 100%. No. You would Good use point, fresh, Johnny. clean water. It attaches to, listen, dude, you put it up real easy. You know me, I can't fix anything. I have zero man school, skills except for making love and making children. Those are my only, okay? And Tell the women, and here and are my man skills. Tell women they're wrong and making kids. Those are my two man skills, okay? All right? Those are it, all right? But uh, here's what I want to tell you. Well, hello, Tushy, all right? Putting it on is really easy. 
It's so simple to hook up. Even daddy over here can do it. So hello, Tushy Bidets. Clean your bums twice as much and prevents poo particles from spreading to your hands and everything you touch, okay? It attaches to your existing toilet, requires zero electricity or additional plumbing, and cuts your toilet paper use by 80%, 80.0%. Hello, Tushy Bidets pays for itself in a few months. Every Hello, Tushy Bidet attached comes with 60-day risk-free guarantee and 12-month warranty. Come on now with 100,000 five-star reviews. That's a lot of happy buttholes, okay? See why millions of people already love Tushy and be part of taking care of the universe and your country and your planet and, and, and your and your, and just everything around you in a cleaner way. Join the five-star clean butthole army, okay? Go to hellotushy.com forward slash tinfoil and use the promo code tinfoil for 10% off your first order. Come on now. That's hellotushy.com forward slash tinfoil to stop wiping and start washing. Uh, I'm, dude, Striking. you get into uh, you get into George Bush, the, the uh, Reagan assassination. Uh, Hinckley says Uncle Joe, uh, uh, Uncle George told me to do it. <laughs> I mean, like, and then these and that regression, can I just say real quick, that regression stuff is all bullshit. That's how they program your mind. Pretty dude, bullshit. Yep, exactly. They can ask very leading questions. They can, uh, because you're in a hypnotic state, and that's where the connection to the MK Ultra stuff comes in, too, because you're in a very impressionable state. You're relaxed, you've been depatterned, you've been uh, deprogrammed, and then with the regression, they can just you can say something and then the regressionist can be like, are you sure it wasn't aliens? You know, and then that gets you because you're in that kind of uh, relaxed state, your, your mind's open. And then that infiltration of that thought from the regressionist completely can, can change your entire outlook of whatever you're being regressed on. Yeah, I mean, we saw that happen in uh, Making of a Murder, right, with the yeah. kid? Yeah. Like, just the, the constant pounding and leading on to just them, say, a weak person, go, yeah, okay, yeah. Can yeah. I go home? Yeah. I want to watch WrestleMania. Yeah, yeah. I'll go WrestleMania. They literally told him, if you say you did it, we'll let you watch WrestleMania. And, and then, then he was like, okay, I did it. Can I yeah, watch it now? And they're yeah. like, nope, you fucked up. It was so, so sad. So let me ask you something. Do you believe in interdimensionals? This is really an interesting aspect of this because whenever you look at the word interdimensional, I N N E R, right? It implies that it's happening within you. It implies that it's happening inside of your head. It's not called outer dimensional. It's not something that's happening outside of yourself. Right, so my thoughts and my ideas of an interdimensional is it's happening in your head. It's happening within the inner space of you. And that's another thing that we have all been programmed with is the word space, right? Whenever NASA or the Air Force or any of these uh, branches of the military come out, they, they only say space. They don't say outer space anymore. But whenever you hear the word space, you automatically think of outer space because we've been programmed to think outer space right but space can be anything you know space could be extra room in your house space could be extra space in your backyard you know space could be uh, the ocean right or space could be in your head so i think the word interdimensional is something that you go within yourself to access. And because again, we haven't had any proof or evidence of any physical extraterrestrial or uh, anything from off of our planet ever surfacing. No one has ever met a physical extraterrestrial ever. It's always in some kind of dream state. It's always in an astral state. It's or it's under the influence of some sort of uh, plant-based medicine. Now, when right? people when people in those states, especially like astral projection, when they encounter entities, what is, is that? Just entirely self-delusion, or, or do you think they're being deceived uh, by someone who can manipulate the people in those states? 
I think that it's uh, a part of our our mind. Uh, I okay. think that you're accessing the deepest part of your mind because people, they can't experience the same exact hallucination. No one has ever, if you take, if we all took a handful of mushrooms right here, right now, you got a handful of mushrooms, uh, Johnny, uh, XG got a handful of mushrooms. Sam got a handful of mushrooms. I took a handful. We're all going to experience different things because we've all had a different experience of life. We've all had different things that we need to get over. We've all been raised differently. So therefore we're going to all experience something differently. So I think that what these people that are saying that they have extraterrestrial contact, they have, uh, you know, that the, they're meeting these beings in the, uh, the, the astral realm and all this. And some of them don't even admit to that. Right, they we they've led people to believe that they're physically interacting with these beings, that they're an actual physical being that you can reach out and like touch them. But if you could reach out and touch them, could you not get some kind of proof? That's why the the that there is no proof because I don't believe that there is a such thing as an extraterrestrial. I think that that is all a, a hallucination. It's either happening in your head. It's uh, due to some kind. Of and a substance you've been mk ultra to believe it um because there's also like an an extraterrestrial program and this is really all came from us all this cover up from that we think that the government is covering up extraterrestrial life in the existence of uh, aliens supposed aliens and uh you know ufos and all that that's all come from us the the government has said since the very beginning that it has absolutely nothing to do with extraterrestrials. So if it has nothing to do with extraterrestrials, that only leaves one other option. That only leaves us. And then whenever we see a UFO in the sky, we automatically assume, oh, well, it's extraterrestrial. It's, it's, it's aliens. We don't know anything about that technology. When, why is it that we think that? First off, why does the craft that we see in the sky even have to have anybody on it? Why can't the craft just be a drone? Two, why, why do we automatically assume that it's extraterrestrial or alien when there's so many other options? See, the, the public thinks that the government has been covering up the existence of aliens and UFOs and like all this uh, uh, technology and, and that they're so advanced. It, it's an excuse. It's a something to pawn everything off onto. Right, Because if you make it about extraterrestrials and aliens coming to visit us and do all this genetic manipulation on us and abducting us and doing this experimentations on us, then the government and the real people that are actually doing it on the planet don't have to take responsibility for it. They can just blame it off onto the aliens and be like, oh, it's the extraterrestrials. It was the aliens that made us do this. It's the extraterrestrials. It's the aliens that's been manipulating humanity forever. It's the reptilians up underneath ground. All the while, it's been them the entire time. It's really genius. It's, it's a genius plan. It's, it's a genius operation. So, and I, go ahead. So we there. Uh, I recently had on my uh, Tim Fall Hat Premium uh, Only Conspiracies episode forty six. I had the Realities Are podcast guys on, and yeah. they brought up something interesting, and it was that. People tend to see what their spiritual beliefs are is what they see, right? So if you're a religious person, you see angels. If you if you're a um, if you're an atheist, you see aliens, right? Of whatever you 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 think you're seeing. Do you have any thoughts on that? Like, do you believe that there are that there's a god that there's entities out there that are at work light and dark that you know uh you know you go back to all the the astrology and you go back to astrology you go back to you know um biblical times it's like all the fallen angels anunnaki watchers do you believe in any of that 
Yes, I do to a certain extent. And I do believe that there are unexplainable things that happen in our reality, but we don't have the capability to wrap our mind around exactly what's happening. So we just create a a label for it and that label takes off and then it creates an own identity of its own. It's a, uh, it's an egregore. It's an egregorical reality. Whatever you put your thoughts and your ideas and your beliefs and your energy and attention to, it creates it in your reality, regardless if it's real or not. See, a lot of this stuff has just been recycled information. If you go back through the the, the history of this kind of phenomenon, each um, society, not society, but each uh, a region of the world way back uh, when in ancient times had these same kinds of thoughts and these ideas, they just labeled it something different. So whatever it is that we're experiencing now, whatever it is that we're calling aliens or extraterrestrials now, it was called something different way back in the day, right? It was fairies. It was, uh, you know, goblins. It was, and we've taken that and it's just snowballed into something different because we're in a kind of a different age of reality. But as far as like un- truly unexplainable things, yeah, I think that there are truly unexplainable things, but we don't have the the wherewithal or the knowledge to even try and figure out exactly what it is. And then we try to label it and wrap our heads around it and it doesn't really do any good. Like I've seen unexplainable things uh, really my entire life when, whenever I was younger. I, I saw something unidentified in the sky with uh, my dad and my mom. We all three seen it. It was in like 97, right? But I really don't care. I, I don't care what that was in it because it doesn't it doesn't matter to me. And I don't need to investigate and, and theorize about what it was because it happened a long time ago and it doesn't really make a difference to me now. See, it, it, it's really like we want this need and this want to believe in certain things because there's such a distrust that's built up between the establishment and the population. And right? Uh, Barack Obama said this uh, probably three or four years ago, is that if we can instill so much distrust within the establishment, then we can basically do whatever we want. Those aren't his exact words. I'm just paraphrasing because I don't have the the exact quote from him. But he's completely right. If you put enough distrust within the population, then all the real stuff that you're actually doing can be brushed under the rug. Just like with people talking about uh, Project Looking Glass, right? I'm sure everyone that's listening and you guys have heard of uh, Project Looking Glass. It's a technology that's been created by the government to see into the future, to see if certain events will turn out and play out according to plan. Well, if you actually research what Project Looking Glass actually is, it's a military air force operation to put a command post in space with the ability to launch nukes in case a ground based operations is uh, been destroyed or uh, rendered unusable. Right. So uh, the community has taken a lot of these thoughts and these ideas and the titles of real operations, and then they have turned them into something that it's not. And I, I can't help but think that that is done on purpose. Yeah, for sure. Damn. So you're saying that. Wow. So Project Looking Glass has nothing to do with time travel, has everything to do with uh, nukes. Yep. Yeah, I believe it, dude. I I I believe all that shit. I think. Yeah, I mean, uh, you can Google, uh, type in, uh, Johnny, if you want to type it in, type in Operation Looking Glass. And you can uh, read all about Click it. it. Click Operation Looking Glass. There you go. Because we were on Project Looking Glass. Yeah. 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 Man, we literally thought it was some time travel shit where they looked into it. Yeah. Yeah. How does that? So how, how does that happen? How does how do we go from it being about nukes to is it well, just to it's make real us real simple? Limited hangouts. They create this whole thing. Just this, you know, steer your attention to that and not the other stuff. It's super crazy, man. It's it super- is wild. And I think that, 
because you have a lot of these, a lot of people that's just compounded upon their own information <laughs> and then their own thought processes and their own ideas into the, the mix without actually researching any of the real projects. And, you know, and the, the Stargate project too, that was, you know, looked at like uh, people talk about it in the community as being a, and a project to actually open up real stargates and uh, like the, the ancient Anunnaki stories, like the Sumerian tablets where the gods could travel through stargates to other dimensions and other realities. And they talk about it like it was an actual project to open up a portal, to go to Mars, to go to the moon and all this stuff. And that's completely wrong. It's not true at all. The, the uh, Project Stargate was a DIA Army intelligence program to study psychics, ESP abilities, telekinesis, and channeling. It was an official, real um, Army intelligence DIA project, and it's very, very convoluted. It gets Do into you? all kinds well, of Well, we're all about convoluted here, but uh, you, you, so you believe in that, because here's my whole thing. I 100% believe in psychics. Uh, I believe in Remote energy. Viewing. I believe I yeah. believe in all of it. I've said this before. I believe in downloads. I think I get downloads. Most of my jokes I write come fully formed from start to finish. Very rarely. Once in a while, I could tag it, make it better. But usually, end, beginning and the end. Bang, 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 pow. Are those typically the better ones, would you say? Yes. I, you hear it from like musicians, you know, that the the song like you know i mean i said it before but paul mccartney had a dream of yesterday the melody and then woke up and you know couldn't Download. believe that yeah so but I'm, they say those are the best ones the ones yeah. that are downloaded like that was that would you, yeah, you observe because, that your you know you're trying to because it's a flow thing right so uh so when you write a new joke and you have to write it out that means you're you're working on it when in a download it comes in its natural form. Is there anything you can do to facilitate that, to promote it, like to make it happen more often? Just keep talking to yourself. <laughs> that's what I do. That's how I get, uh, that's how I make comedy happen. But, but what also happens is that I do believe that I have this, and even though Johnny may not like my batting average, uh, I do believe I play things out in my head and I, I, I could see how it's going to go. Like in the shower type of stuff, you know how in the shower no, just type of stuff, in general, like a conversation. When I think of something, I think of an event, I go, what is the play here? And it plays out in my head, and usually it ends up being more right than it is wrong. Nothing's a, When you're predicting anything, it's very hard to get bad a thousand with specifics, but generalizations and stuff like that. Like when we had Gary, the numbers guy, on, and he was like, the finals is going to involve uh, Igadawu and this group's going to win. Well, the other team won, but Igadawu was then... He went from the team he was on originally to this team and made it to the finals. So, I mean, like, it's nothing's 100% or bang a thousand. So, you do believe in these psychic powers. Absolutely. And because it's, it's proven, there's actual real documentation behind it. And I've had, I've brought, uh, because really where this started was researching the MK Ultra programs and going through all those uh, sub projects and seeing that Sydney Gottlieb was doing studies on psychics, remote viewing, and um, uh, ESP abilities. So then I'm like, okay, well, I'll just research this Stargate project. And then I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to contact all of the people that were, you know, officially a part of this uh, Army Intelligence DIA program. And I did, and then I have brought all the ones that would come on my show on my show. I had uh, Angela Ford. I had Lynn Buchanan, which Lynn Buchanan is the gentleman uh, that the movie, the men who stare at goats is based off of. Ah, I don't know if you guys have seen that yeah, movie, yeah, that uh, the men who stare at goats. Yeah. And then I had uh, Dr. David Morehouse on, I had Dr. Uh, Paul Smith on, and then I had Del Graft and Del Graft was the one that actually changed the name to uh, Stargate because it ran under uh, different names. It ran under Sunstreak, um, Girl Flame, uh, Center Lane, and then it, it just eventually sounds like Transformers names, right? Like different Transformers. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, they would, they needed to do like, code names and uh you know code words during that time of the the cold war but um 
the like I was mentioning earlier with the MK Ultra programs, right? The every almost all of the intelligence community, all of the military community was all involved with running their own experiments with MK Ultra, and the exact same is with the Stargate program and uh, the, the dia all of the military services all had at one time or another been involved in uh, numerous of what they call psycho energetics tests and most of them were all applications oriented meaning that they all found a use for it so the where a lot of this starts is with sri stanford research institute oh, here we but, go. stanford is very interesting dude Lot of lot of CIA activity out of Stanford. You know, I mean, we talked about a couple of weeks ago that that whole couldn't Kavanaugh thing. The witness, she was part of the CIA intern program at Stanford. Lot of CIA spook stuff going on up at Stanford. So go on. Sorry. Yeah, and this is where the whole thing really kicked off was uh, SRI in the early seventies. And basically, SRI is a government contractor uh, from 1942 to, I believe, 46. Um, they were doing a study on uh, investigating if a plant could be used as a source of uh, natural rubber in Congress after the war ended, World War II ended. Uh, they cut the funding of that. And then SRI's first uh, economic study was for the United States Air Force, which is, which is another very interesting thing that connects to uh, something else that I'm going to talk about here a little bit later. Uh, and th that study was to um, determine the expansion of uh, United States uh, aircraft industry and uh, for the Air Force. So SRI found that it would take too long to escalate production in, in an emergency. So in 1948, SRI began, uh, also began research and consultation with Chevron Corporation to develop artificial substitute for coconut oil and soap projects. So the reason for you know mentioning all that is to again, established that SRI is a government contractor. And most government contractors, as we know, are front for the intelligence community and the intelligence uh, agencies, right? So, and then it's also saying that, you know, SRI worked for the Air Force prior. So SRI formally separated from Stanford University in 1970, and then in 77 became known as SRI International. So in uh, 72, the Army, uh, together with the DIA, published studies on uh, the Soviets' work in psychoenergetics. And this is where a lot of this stuff comes from because they wanted to get a kind of an upper hand on the Soviets uh, during the Cold War because they thought that they were using psychics to collect intelligence information. Right, so in that same year, SRI Stanford Research Institute started started their research on psychoenergetics in 72 with Hal Putoff, which is very interesting because Hal Putoff is all about the UFO phenomenon now with To the Stars Academy and all that, and Russell Targ, which Russell Targ was a laser physicist. So they did a series of investigations of the psychic phenomena sponsored and funded by the CIA through Sidney Gottlieb, which was the head of the MK Ultra programs. And they had consciousness test subjects, consciousness research test subjects, which is Ingo Swan and Pat Price. And this started the research project known as Syndicate in 73. And Syndicate was uh, the, the SRI project to determine if remote viewing and psychoenergetic phenomenon was real. Because if this was possible, that the subjects at SRI could be using psychic powers to freaking collect intelligence uh, information, uh, could they subliminally be getting that information on a target or somehow getting it from memory. So they started running a bunch of tests and during the testing, Ingo Swan was given a coordinate and he described some kind of military base in the woods. Then the coordinate was given to a gentleman, a uh, businessman uh, that was just referred to as Pat in the official documents. Just a reminder, all this information is coming directly from the declassified uh, Sunstreak document by uh, the DIA this? and the syndicate document and uh, Girl Flame document from Army Intelligence. What was that? What year was this? 
this uh, this research started in 73 with uh, Project Syndicate, which was the CIA was funding to be able to determine if these psychics were actually getting real information. Hey, guys, I want to tell you about our good friends at Miracle Made Sheets. That's Miracle Made Sheets. Guys, do you know that traditional bed sheets can harbor more bacteria than a toilet seat? Come on! Uh. It, yeah, gross, right? It can lead to acne, allergies, stuffy nose, and it's just... Just plain grossy poo, okay? Miracle Brand offers a whole line of self-cleaning, eco-friendly bedding, such as sheets, pillowcase, comforters that prevent 99% bacteria and require three times less laundry. Bang, bro. Bang. Okay, Miracle Made sheets uh, have silver infused fabrics that are thermoregulating and designed to keep you at the perfect temperature all night long so you get better sleep every night these sheets are infused with natural silver that prevents 99.9 percent of the bacterial growth leaving them to stay cleaner and fresher three times longer than the other sheets no more gross odors okay miracle brand sheets are luxuriously comfortable without the high price tag of other luxury brands stop sleeping Sleeping on bacteria. Clean sheets means less bacteria to clog your pores and fewer breakouts and other skin problems. Okay, so this is what we want you to do. Go to trymiracle.com slash tinfoil. Okay, trymiracle.com slash tinfoil to try and try today. Also, we got a special deal for our listeners. Save over 40% and be sure to use the promo code Tinfoil at checkout to save even more and get three free towels. Woo. Come on! Yeah. And Miracle is so confident in their product. It's backed with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you are 100% satisfied, or hey, hey, yeah, if you're not satisfied, guess what? You'll get a free refund. That's how easy it is. So here's what we want you to do. Upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made. Go to trymiracle.com slash tinfoil and use the code tinfoil to claim your free three-piece towel set and save over 40%. Again, that's trymiracle.com slash tinfoil to treat yourself. Winning. This guy, poor guy Pat, probably like just <laughs> filled in a, a apple. I saw an application in the newspaper, showed up in his <laughs> brown suit because everybody in the 70s wore brown, yeah. showed up and they were just like, Picture where this is. And he's like, oh, okay, <laughs> this is an easy job. And it's like, and now forever he's known as Pat. Well, it, we know his name now as uh, Pat Price, but in the official documents, it was just named Pat because they wanted his uh, identity to be kind of kept secret, which is another very interesting thing because Pat Price died in 75 and it was under very suspicious circumstances. Uh, CIA was trying to separate Pat price from SRI and there was a bunch of weird things that evolved is that he was found dead in a hotel room in California a lot of very uh, suspicious things that go on there and at that very time the CIA was cutting funding to SRI so I don't know. I don't know. It's very interesting, and there's a lot of theories and speculations. But when Pat Price got the coordinates to uh, verify Ingo Swan's remote viewing of the suspected military base in West Virginia, he described almost the exact same thing, but in larger detail. He, it, It's incredible, guys. Freaking 100% incredible reading these documents. He's describing wind speed. He's describing altitude. He's describing oh, really? the surrounding areas. And what was that? So he, so this guy wasn't just a dude who showed up. He's somebody who had psychic abilities as well. Yes, that's referred to in these documents as well as that. These uh, test subjects in the beginning had already developed abilities. That, that was the exact uh, wow. words in those documents that they were already developed. And, like develop, and as, is, develop as it already had them? Like, yes. So you can't, you, someone can't get them, like you can't be like, you can't be taught. How to well, that's another thing project. that happened later on. Uh, Ingo Swan um, created a, a protocol to be able to train the Army intelligence people and the DIA people on a way to remote view. And I've brought on all, all the psychics and the remote viewers that I can possibly find that was a part of this project on my show. And they, well, it's a unanimous decision that everybody has the ability to remote view. But some people 
have always had the ability, they've always had access to the ability, which then gets into my thought of, uh, well, how did they get this ability? And I'm currently doing research right now on out of body experiences and near-death experiences because from my understanding a lot of psychic abilities that people didn't have prior they have a near-death experience or an out-of-body experience and then they come back with some sort of psychic ability whether that be intuition remote viewing uh telepathy these kinds of things which is another very interesting aspect of this which is the monroe institute army intelligence actually paid the monroe institute i don't know if you guys are familiar with the monroe institute but it's like a uh it's a hemi-sync program where they put frequencies in both sides of your ears that are running uh, simultaneously to induce an out-of-body experience and army intelligence actually paid the Monroe Institute, $2,000 to take their army personnel to Robert Monroe at the Monroe Institute to study out-of-body experiences to try and induce an out-of-body experience. And then there's a lot of confusion there, too, because that program was called the Gateway Program. And the Gateway Program has nothing to do with remote view doing, but I still find it interesting that Army Intelligence paid them to go there and study. I think there's a connection there. But a lot of people have been confused and they think that they were a part of the Stargate official Army Intelligence DIA program when they were really a part of a gateway program that had absolutely nothing to do with remote viewing. But I'm still doing research on these connections here because I think it's uh, very fascinating and I don't think people have really put that whole thing together there. But yeah, it's still really interesting. That is super interesting. It's also interesting that they only got paid $2,000. Like when did that happen? <laughs> Here's two thousand dollars. Nope. What am I gonna buy lunch for everybody? Come on, cough up some more cash. Uh, do you believe that the government is now using psychics at higher levels? I do believe that, and I believe that it's evolved and it's turned into something else, and that they are using it in a more, more nefarious way because. I could probably go on uh, about this whole program for uh, another hour, but I guess just for the, the, the case of the show, um, I'll just skip ahead here a little bit because it's actually really important. So in 76, the Mitchell missing can even say the word missile intelligence agency uh, informally inspre- expressed interest in the U.S. Uh, replication of claimed Soviet experiments and psychoenergetics, right? Because this is another, like I was mentioning earlier, another supposed way that the intelligence community got involved uh, was they received intel that the Soviets were doing research and they had to play catch up, which I think is an official excuse to start up the program. Because when Pat Price remote viewed this top secret military base in West Virginia, he actually got in there with his mind and he was able to see classified information that the government was working on within this top secret military underground base in West Virginia. So that really spooked them. They were like, holy shit, if this dude at SRI can see into our military bases and get top secret classified yeah. information, which he got, he, he got the, he even got the names of the generals that was running the base. He got the the names of the uh, classified code name programs, which had everything to do with uh, the game of pool. Like it was like, uh, you know, eight ball, rack up, uh, six ball, like all, all this stuff that was related to pool. And I think that that really spooked them. But in order to actually open up an official program, they had to blame it on the the Soviets, that the Soviets were doing this so that we can start officially start up a program. Because I haven't ran across any documentation that verifies that the Soviets were using remote viewing as a way to collect intelligence data. Now, I have ran across a Russian document that talks about remote viewing, but no confirmation that they were actually using psychoenergetics to collect intelligence data on foreign assessments. Right. So I think that they used that as a whole excuse to actually, you know, start an official Army Intelligence DIA program. Um, so they decided, though, they were like, hey, like, we need to start up this uh, intelligence data collection. Um, and but, uh, you know, again, nothing, you know, confirming in that whole thing. But anyway, SRI developed a uh, small program for the Missile Intelligence Agency, and they awarded SRI a one-year contract developing 
uh, uh, developmental contract. And during that same time, the Army uh, Intelligence was involved with the the investigation of remote viewing concepts with SRI. So all these things are running congruently. So in 77, U.S. Army Intelligence uh, Security Command uh, established a team project uh, under the the Assistant Deputy Chief of Staff of Human Intelligence and implemented the Gondola Wish program in Fort Meade, Maryland by 78. The uh, Army Intelligence concluded that there was sufficient evidence to warrant the program because they were already uh, they were already interested in it. They were already basically funding it through SRI and they had a contract with SRI. But then the Army uh, canceled the Gondola Wish program and placed a complete security envelope over the Army and Army Army's interest in psychoenergetics, but then created a new program directed toward intelligence collection using remote viewers, and that project was called Grill Flame. And that project was to uh, use as a data collection or uh, intelligence collection method. So by 78 INSCOM, United States Army Intelligence and Personnel Command, uh, oh, sorry, Security Command, had the uh, personnel that they wanted. They had the program. They had elected the training to be initiated. And uh, the people that trained those uh, Army personnel, that was Ego Swan. Like I was mentioning earlier, he created the whole um, playbook on how to remote view to collect intelligence data. And uh, I'm beginning to, all of the remote viewers that I've brought on my show have said that Ingo Swan uh, trained a majority of these army um, intelligence people, but also seeing that Ingo Swan never actually walked through the doors at Fort Meade. So not exactly sure how he really trained them, but we know that army intelligence had a contract with SRI. Uh, So um, the issue that they kind of ran into was would the information obtained from remote viewing and psychics be reasonable and accurate? And if so, would they be accepted and used by the intelligence community? So on September 4th, 79 army ACSI task ends come to locate a missing Navy aircraft, which is really wild because Jimmy Carter actually confirmed this in uh, 95. And this was the first grill flame operational remote viewing session and the remote viewer located the missing aircraft within 50 miles of where it was down. And uh, based on those results, INSCOM was tasked to work on additional targets that forced the hand of ACSI to head into full swing operations and skip over all the training phases of the unit. And, uh, And now um, Jimmy Carter correlates that exact same thing, though Jimmy Carter, uh, President Jimmy Carter in 95, uh, says that it was a a woman that the head of the CIA contacted in California to remove you a a down plane, which was half true. Um, It was was kind of like a misdirection. It was a misdirection so that they could cover up the fact that they actually had a, a program uh, of remote viewers. Ah. And it actually came from Dale Graff's small uh, remote viewing unit at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base uh, from a woman named Rose Mary Smith. And they also had a assistance from a uh, gentleman named Gary Langford at SRI to help as well. But the story is true. Jimmy Carter... Uh, is telling the truth, but it's not exactly how he says it. So later on, the Perry, this uh, memorandum called the Perry Memorandum in 1980, which uh, cut funding for psychoenergetics activities that didn't include intelligence application efforts. So in 81, a few months later, ACSI transferred the Project Girl Flame Management to INSCOM, which in the United States Army Intelligence uh, Security Command, they had combined efforts. Uh, this wasn't the only time that they uh, tr- transferred or combined. So the DIA Army ACSI signed a joint grill flame to implement a three-year program. So the DIA's role in this joint operation was threat analysis, countermeasures, use psychics primarily through SRI contracts because they've been working with SRI since uh, 78. They had already established a business partnership with SRI. So U.S. Army uh, INSCOM role was to apply remote viewing program, use the uh, assigned personnel uh, and contract to uh, enhance capability. 
So remember how I said that everyone had their hands in the pot on this? Well, merging of the DIA and Army into one program also formalized cooperations among the, the Secretary of the Army, Army General Counsel, Assistant Surgeon General for Medical R&D, Vice Chief of Staff for the Army, NSA, CIA, and the Navy. So they were all in on this project. But then the uh, budget subcommittee cut the funding to Grill Flame because they thought the project had been double budgeted. One of the uh, one funding coming from Army Intelligence and the other coming from the DIA when they were both working on it together. But they let the DIA complete their third year. So at the end of 82, INSCOM Army Intelligence terminated their formal involvement with Girl Flame, the, which, which was the DIA. And Army Intelligence opened up a new special access program called Center Lane. See, I told you guys this was, I hope this isn't too boring. No, it's uh, I, I hope it's informational it. because listening. I think it's, that it's really important. I'm in. I'm in. I love all this. It's just, it's so deep. And I just listen to like the, like, it's just like the U S military is constantly at war with itself. Right. Like everywhere else has like two tanks and a couple guys with pocket knives and sporks. And the U S military is constantly on these. Well, yeah. If you look at the top, like 10 militaries, almost all of them are us or uh, it's us. And then allies of us. Yeah. Like the first, you have to go so far down to get to somebody who's not allied. We're just with the giving States. them stuff. They're like, I don't really need this. Wow. Take it. Take it. <laughs> God. So, so this new memorandum basically gave, uh, it, uh, knocked out the Perry memorandum and allowed resources to be used to maintain support of Army's center lane program and uh, with the funding of uh, security and investigative activities. So in 83, the Army remote viewing SAP program center lane was decided that it should be continued and should be under overall management of the DIA. So in 84, it was decided that center lane special access program ran by the army should be more uh, responsive to strategic national uh, level tasking. And in order to do this, they would need to merge their units. So this is the second merging of uh, two different programs. So by 85, the transfer from army center lane project to DIA's girl flame program was completed. And then it became a DOD special access program. And the funding was restored because it was a pure intelligence and data collections program, no R&D uh, stuff, finding missing planes and all that that wasn't a part of a official uh, intelligence data collection. So then we get another name change of the program again, which is called Sunstreak. And the mission of Sunstreak was to undergo operational intelligence applications using an aspect of psychoenergetics known as remote viewing. Now, something very interesting in this document, um, not only the, Sovo, uh, the, the Soviet threat, which is uh, completely unproven, like I stated earlier, but that the Soviets were, you know, using psychoenergetics to collect intelligence data on foreign targets, but it's still referenced in the documents. But also, this is really interesting, that the Chinese scientists oh, claims to have used remote viewing during their experiments and they were using children. And once the children got to a certain age, I, I believe that the age was 12, they were kicked out of the program, which then really gets into this disassociative aspect of MK ultra and using children within these programs and the traumatization of children to activate these kinds of abilities. Because if you go back and you study through, you know, ancient society and ancient uh, times and uh, ancient uh, groups and stuff, you'll see that they would do rituals to traumatize children because their thoughts and their ideas was that if a child isn't traumatized by a certain age, then they wouldn't have any psychic abilities. They wouldn't have uh, high amounts of intuition. They wouldn't have um, ESP abilities. They wouldn't have any of these abilities that kind of comes along with the traumatization. So they would purposefully traumatized children yeah. because they needed them to have abilities so that they could go out in the woods and hunt. They needed to have intuitive abilities. So this is a really big connection here between uh, these programs, MK Ultra, God traumatizing. Dang, man. What the military does, what the government does to children is just unforgivable and disgusting. 
It really is. Now, I did a show on the CW, Credit Drop, okay? It, and uh, we did the Montauk Project. What do you think of that? I think the Montauk Project is a big bunch of nothing. Uh, the Montauk Whoa. Project was... Damn, was God, basically damn. a. Uh, I mean, this is just the the, the truth and the and the evidence. Of it was it, just right? a pedophile they, ring, right? Is that what it was? It, it, yeah, but it was a dude that liked to uh, uh, strap boys down into a chair and jerk off in front of him. So, and then there's also proofs of uh, the the cages and all that stuff that was at Montauk. All oh, that was you. That was like an animal testing facility. It had nothing to do with children. They were actually. Uh, the government and stuff were trying to create uh, chimeras and change the DNA and uh, the, the way the animals operate to, to change their biology and all that to create like a weird freaking creature. And there's evidence of that, of these weird creatures uh, uh, washing up on the beach at, at Montauk. So I, I think that the whole Montauk story has been completely blown out of proportion and again turned into something that it's not by uh, a lot of people that you know uh, have no idea what they're talking about and i don't you know blame them say so, but the the continuous perpetual nature of montauk being uh not verifiably what it was isn't really doing anybody any favor right you're not actually getting to the truth of the matter and that's what happens with a lot of these programs and a lot of these uh thoughts and ideas i mean people can hate me people can you know throw uh nonsense and uh, you know bullshit at me and say that there's all this stuff that was going on but none of it's it can't be verified right there's a lot of people that say that that are freaking young dude that are like 20 21 years old that are saying that they were a part of the montauk project <laughs> Like, what are you talking about? The Montauk w was shut down these decades fucking ago. fucking TikTokers. That's a good point, I have to say. Yeah. <laughs> Freaking TikTokers running around acting like they're eating Tide Pods, talking that they're part of the Montauk Project. <laughs> Shut up, you Generation Z. Let me ask you something. I, I've uh, been on his podcast. He's been on this podcast. Joe Roop of Lighting the Void uh, podcast, Fringe FM, good friend, great guy. Uh, love his stuff. Uh, he's very much into astral projection. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, it says in these documents, Sam, that the the remote viewing went under different terms through its infancy. It was known as different things uh, to different um, uh, communities, right? So in the uh, occult community and uh, parapsychological community, it was known as astral projection and out-of-body experiences and through the uh, psychological community which is another very interesting aspect of this it's known as disassociation right so you disassociate from your body and you're able to get outside of your body with your consciousness and go out and view things that aren't in your uh, realm of uh, uh that's not right by you uh -huh. right so and they settled on remote viewing because Doesn't remote sound viewing that bad. was free. It was free of uh, occult presumptions and uh, things that had already been established. So there wasn't any uh, o overlapping and there wasn't really a too names. much uh, woo stuff. We got uh, remote viewing, sure. dissociation, or mind rape. What do you guys think? <laughs> We're going to go, okay, let's get, mm. let's get rid of the two bad ones. Let's go with uh, mind rape. Okay, no, oh. no, that's a bad one. <laughs> I thought you said the two bad, bad ones. One. Oh, that's a bad one. We're Damn it. Go that was my suggestion. Well, the reason I bring up uh, Joe and because uh, we've talked about astral projection before on multiple podcasts, and he had brought up because this goes back to, you know, the government and psychic stuff is that according to him, I have the book at home, an author. It's either he experiences or Joe experienced, or I believe the author experienced that the White House actually has guards in the astral projection realm, protecting the president and the White House in that realm. Wait, from what? mind rape, yeah. From, yeah, from, from mind, mind rape. <laughs> have you ever yeah, heard I don't that? Think, I don't think that I've heard a lot of people talk about that. Now, I've never had a astral experience. I've never really been outside of my body. I've come pretty close with doing breathing techniques and certain things that you do to try and induce an out-of-body experience. And I think that it's, 
very possible. And I think they're really all related. Like I was mentioning earlier, Army Intelligence giving the pain Monroe Institute the study uh, to induce an out-of-body experience. Now, if the out-of-body experience is associated with trauma, because we hear a lot of trauma victims and people that have been through everyday life trauma as uh, they see the event from outside of their body, right? So if the trauma aspect of MK Ultra is connected to out of body experiences, and these abilities are somehow a byproduct of traumatization. The government would want to study these kinds of things to implement these psychic uh, spy abilities, these uh, collecting intelligence data to, to be able to create psychics. So that's my idea of why they they went to that study at Monroe Institute. Anyway, it was a way for them to try and organically create a psychic instead of traumatizing the person and uh, depatterning them, drugging them and everything. If they can figure out a way to organically get them to have this out-of-body experience to unlock some sort of abilities, that would be the easier way to do it because – Within these MK Ultra programs, very few people actually survive the process, right? A lot of them would just go catatonic. They would just, like, uh, their mind would just be completely fried, you know? So it makes sense to me that they would want to, if abilities are a byproduct of trauma, and that was the whole point of the MK Ultra programs was to traumatize people to implant thoughts and ideas and beliefs into the subject's head. And the abilities came as a byproduct of that. And then they realized that, and then they open up their official psychic spy program in 78. Then whenever it shut down in 95, because it was supposed to be given back to the CIA in 95 from the DIA and the DIA and the CIA stepped in and was like, Hey, we're shutting this thing down. No valuable intelligence data has ever been collected from this program, which is a giant lie. There's huge verifiable evidence that they use a lot of the psychic remote viewing as intelligence correlating data um, in these documents. And if they didn't, then why did they leave the program running for almost uh, 20 years? There's absolutely no reason why they would do that. When in time, when in the history of any governmental program, do they keep doing something that doesn't prove any benefit to them? If they realized that it wasn't any benefit, they would have shut it down within the year. Right, so the excuse that they needed to shut down the program because there wasn't any valuable intelligence data collected from it is just that. It's just an excuse. And I think that they had another application, and this gets into your question uh, that you asked me earlier. Are they still using them? And I 100% believe that they are still using them. And it's evolved into something more nefarious, and it's not just about collecting intelligence data anymore on foreign assessments or, or on foreign targets. I mean, it could sometimes be used for that, but I think that it's evolved and this is going to sound a little wackadoo, but it is 100% verifiable that it's being used for a remote influence and a remote control pro program to get inside of somebody else's head plant thoughts, ideas, and beliefs, and make them do things that they wouldn't normally do under normal. Couldn't that be like a download then? Couldn't, couldn't we see it as a download and they're not downloading them? They're literally asked the fucking telling me what to do through. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, my first thought about this was because I was interviewing Lynn Buchanan and he was uh, an official army officer and, and He's, he was talking to me about this time that he had these men in black government officials come to him and ask him if he could kill Saddam Hussein with his mind. Like suicide? What? Like legitimately kill him with his mind. Kill like him. Oh. remote view him to the Murder. point that he could raise the blood pressure of of the individual uh, in order to have them have an aneurysm or have them have a heart attack. What was his response to this? And he said, no, that he wouldn't do it. But I asked him in that interview, I was like, oh, well, I know that you said 
No, it might have been Osama bin Laden. I actually think it was Osama bin Laden, not Saddam Hussein. And I want to be fact- factually accurate here. I think that it was Osama bin Laden. But, and I asked him, I was like, hey, well, I know that you said no to them and that you wouldn't, uh, you know, kill Osama bin Laden with your brain, uh, with your mind psychically. But could you have done it if you wanted to? Oh, great question. He said, and he said, yes, yes, I could have done it. I could have killed him with my mind. And there's an actual official document from SRI that uh, explains the step-by-step process. Uh, Well, it wasn't from SRI. It was actually written by Ed May. And it was a step-by-step process. I believe that there's like 20 steps in order to remote influence somebody to plant thoughts, plant ideas, plant things in people's heads. And then, you you know, you kind of look around in our reality right now and you kind of see that, right? With all these shooters, all these people that are doing this yeah, weird and 100%. wacky stuff. And, yeah, 100%. And you don't know why they're doing it. They don't know why they did it. They just yeah. went out and did it. They don't remember when they did it. The, uh, the, uh, the Colorado movie theater guy doesn't remember doing it. The uh, Paradise City guy, if you Paradise High School, if you even want to believe that story, uh, that poor kid. Well, I mean, I'm not saying poor kid, but I mean, there's a lot of stuff out there that says there's a whole different story than we've been told. Whole different story from that young, attractive blonde girl was like, he was next to me when we heard shots happening to the teacher going, I saw people in, I saw cops in all full body armor shooting people with a weird gun. And then we see the afterwards, those guys running out the back of the school with bags thrown into a truck and they take off. I'm just telling you, bro. I mean, then you get, you got the, uh, then you have, uh, the guy who shot up Pulse nightclub. He's connected to uh, Obama, his sure. his dad's like a fundraiser for Obama. Like weird shit going on. Don't forget the Vegas shooter. The Vegas shooter. I mean, if that's even a real story, I mean, like, come on, man. All this stuff happening. Then you just, how many of these guys do we have stories that the FBI not only knew about them but didn't act on it and actually sat back and watched? That's a big part of uh, Charles Manson's whole story. The whole story was that the FBI was outside and sat there. Right. And my whole thought and my theory evolved from Lim Buchanan saying that he could uh, kill uh, Osama bin Laden with his mind. And I was like, well, that would be kind of the lazy way to do it, right? <laughs> you wouldn't just want to kill someone outright with your mind. You would want to manipulate plant thoughts ideas and beliefs into somebody else to do the assassination or do the killing for you yep a yep. brother someone he loves yep. yep because that creates way more political upheaval that creates way more chaos than uh you know someone just you know dying in a in a cave or someone just having a heart attack or whatever or dying of what would uh, be uh, apparent natural causes from a uh, an, an actual you know uh, study of the body and doing a um uh, what, what's it called a uh, examination of the body to see what the cause of death was you would want to mind control you would want to influence somebody else to do it for you yeah you know, that's I my mean, thoughts you hear it all the time dude you hear it all the time man it's just like uh, a person who um was weak-minded didn't fit in i mean look at the michigan governor story that becomes a giant FBI. Like 15 guys, 12 of them were FBI informants. And there was the funniest meme. It was one of those Spider-Man memes oh. <laughs> where it's like 10 Spider-Mans pointing at each other. Yeah. It says FBI agent, FBI, and then it starts with some poor autistic fuck, right? <laughs> I mean, that's basically what it is. They manipulate these guys, get them to do stuff, and then bust them. Wasn't that just a point of uh, the Mandalorian? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They did that during uh, the war on terror. Yeah, they'd give people like bombs and stuff, and be like, "Here, you you have everything. All you gotta do is press the button." And this yeah. kid was like, was super fucked up, doesn't know what yeah. he wants to do with his well, life. Presses kid, the button, and they come in on right him. Right now, they have um, 
Some parents are suing the FBI because they tried to manipulate their kid. What? There's a, a the, the these parents of this kid caught the FBI manipulate their They're son like into doing something like some kind on the internet, of, some kind of like fucking high impact event on the internet. Like they were what in like a message board yeah, or something. Yeah, like that? yeah, no shit. Damn. Well, did I saw? Did see you see? It did you see that thing on Twitter that I found the other day that the, that the FBI is advertising in Los Angeles? They have this dramatic video trying to get Russian defectors. And like, yeah. you, we all want to help Russia. Yeah. You, you, you yeah. help us help you, basically. Is that the one I'll you're talking about? No, no, no. Sand. There's actually, uh, they stopped it from happening. They stopped it from happening. Parents who, were, oh, oh uh, uh, because they allowed it to happen. Uh, well, you'll find it. It will take forever. You know, so, I mean, that's my basic, that's it. I mean, like, I ask myself all the time, Ryder, how much actual chaos in the world would happen if there wasn't this invisible hand manipulating people into doing stuff? Most of your revolutions, your civil wars, your your social um, upheaval always has a, a, a invisible hand of intelligence and banker money. January 6th is it. You know, this is dropping today, Tuesday. We don't know what time it will drop, whether the Trump stuff will have happened or not. We don't know if that's going to be something. But all I know is Trump keeps telling everybody, go and protest. This is the same motherfucker that told everybody to march on Capitol Hill. That's suspicious. Yeah. Sorry. And it's just suspicious in general. Like, why would they blast that everywhere? Why yeah. would they tell the Internet that he's going to be arrested? When, when when do they ever tell us the truth? They're, they're not going to tell us what's going on before it happens. It's going to be a surprise. I don't look for anything to happen on Tuesday. I just don't. I don't think that it's going to happen. If it does, then, uh, well, I mean, cool. They, they, they did something different, and they told us something that was going to happen before it was happening, and then it really actually happened. But I don't see them actually spreading all this out. And I sure as hell don't see Trump saying that he's going to be arrested and then he actually gets arrested. It doesn't make well, any sense. It makes lo get arrested, logical sense. But people have seen him and he go, he doesn't look like he cares at all. So you, you know? think this is all for ratings? 100%? No, I think this is all. I think January 6th did not get them their domestic violence. I mean, domestic, domestic <laughs> violence. There wasn't enough men <laughs> beating their wife that day. Their uh, insurrection. You know, they're a, a domestic terrorism. So they're going to try to... Well, crank, I mean, they need something to usher in this sweeping... Uh, they want it to be like Paris right now, basically. Yeah. Like, have you seen that's what yeah. That's what they wanted January yeah. 6th to be. Paris, so they could be like, we got to take... This, this is a craziness. And then you just hear like people on The View... Just going, one of the biggest threats right now in this country is domestic terrorism. Said nobody ever that didn't get that as a talking well, point. Well, and you can tell that, Sam, because it's in a lot of the media now, too. The entertainment is a lot of like domestic terrorism, white terrorists, stuff like that. Yeah, you're totally but right. It's they, predictive they programming. They're trying to get you to accept it. So what do you think was the Tucker Carlson releasing all those videos of the fucking... About it showing him getting walked in and stuff? I, I, don't, I, I don't trust Tucker as far as I can kick him. That's my opinion. That guy has been. I think he's a system guy for sure. I, I mean, he as as those guys go, he's probably the least harmful. But, but dude, you don't get there unless you play ball. Yeah. You don't get anything out unless you play ball. Yeah, like he has to if play he ball to get those out videos. Anything for real, they would fucking annihilate him. Well, he just plays ball with a certain side, so they give him some perks, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, okay. he he replaced O'Reilly. Uh, you know, really. I mean, he's the heart and soul of Fox now. Him and Greg Gutfeld, amazingly. <laughs> I mean, I like Greg Gutfeld. He, he kills on YouTube. Go, go look at Tucker Carlson's oh. numbers yeah, on YouTube. Of course, because he blows it listen, out of the water. Listen, he's what I think people think Alex Jones is for the most. Like, I, don't get me wrong, Alex. I think Alex Jones, uh, he says some crazy shit, but he's right a lot. I I think Tucker Carlson is more controlled opposition than they think. Hunt, oh yeah, he is. Alex Jones is. I mean, uh, Tucker Carlson is on Fox News. <laughs> That's my opinion. Well, people forget that Fox was a uh, Democrat station. It was a liberal station. And they they all just flip back and forth. They all just 
when something is popular, they'll push that. When something's not popular, they'll push that. And it, it's just a constant flipping of uh, uh, of the news stations. And I don't think any of it is is what we think that it is. They're all working together. They're all on the same team. It's like pro wrestling, right? They're enemies out in front of the camera, but in, in the locker room, they're the best of friends or the best of buddies. So, and then you have the whole UFO narrative right now, the alien narrative, the balloons, and then uh, the, all the Pentagon talking about this mothership that's coming into oh, Earth yeah. that'll be here yeah. in a couple of months. Get the fuck <laughs> out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. All right. Well, Ryder, you came, you saw, you crushed it. Ryder Lee, thank you for coming on. One more time, tell them where they can find you. You can find me on uh, Raised by Giants on YouTube, Rockfin, Odyssey, Rumble, and all of the different podcast platforms on Instagram at Raised by Giants Pod and Twitter at Raised by Giants E. Thank you guys so much. Really appreciate a really awesome conversation. Uh, thanks, Johnny. Thanks, uh, XG. And thanks, Talking Sam. Appreciate you guys. Greatly appreciate. Guys, guys, tomorrow night, Daddy's in Yuma. Go check it out. Go to Sam Triple again for anything you need. Anything else, guys? Uh, Broken Sam. Go get it. Go get it. Don't you have a show? I'll be done by then. No. All right, cool. All right, guys. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon. Have a great weekend. All right, guys, real quick before we're done, we want to tell you about all of our affiliates. It's a great way to support the show. Uh, as you know, uh, fiat money is chaos. Okay, fractional reserve banking, dangerous. The best way to get out of it is precious metals, in particular, silver and gold, silver and gold. And that's why we're working at Wise Wolf, okay? Wise Wolf, silver and gold. Just go to samtriplee.com or samtriplee.gold, and you can join. And uh, the, he's hooking you up. They got great pro that you can either buy single time or you can sign up for their program where you can buy up to $500 a month. I'm doing it. I hope you can, too. We also have... Everybody at Eagle Research, that's right, Eagle Research, AquaCure Mobile Model AC50 Brown Gas, Hydrogen Brown Gas. Uh, the guy who makes it says it's secure. People are using it. Check it out. Just go there, use the, the, the promo code Tin foil hat, three words, and get a discount. Go back to the main page, Sam Tripoli. You will get, uh, yeah, you get a discount with the promo code Tin foil. And then our good friends over at Haley Ray Crystal Shop Go to the, the promo code is Swarm, Swarm 15, fifteen. Get fifty percent off all your crystals, all your quartz, all uh, you name it. What do we got here? Look at all this stuff. All this stuff. All the best. You can do it right there. It's all part of the best crystal shop on the internet. Jewels, bracelets, clusters, you name it. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Candles. You name it. You got it. Swarm 15. Thank you for supporting the show. We love you. And uh, thank you so much for your support. We go deep, homeboy. Aaron, open your mind. Drink. From the fountain of knowledge. There's lizard people everywhere. <laughs> That's some interdimensional <laughs> shit. <laughs> Wake up, Aaron. This is only the beginning. There's, you just blew my mind. Tim foil hat, Tim foil hat, Tim foil hat.